Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, Actor Slash. My name is Van Hitapia. I'm an actor, slasher, actor, slash producer, and I'm the founder of Actor Slash. And I would like to welcome you from very warm but cloudy Los Angeles, California, where we are streaming from. And again, once again, I'm super excited because today I have three amazing fellow actors who are international from different nationalities and they are joining me right here. So before we start, please make sure you follow Actor Slash and write down on the comments, where are you watching us from? What part of the world are you watching us? And at the very end, we're gonna try to address most of the questions. So make sure you write them right there. Also, we've been sharing this live event in our personal worlds and probably someone else have done it already, but uh, we will only be able to read the questions that are specifically written in actor slash streaming. So saying that, I'm going to welcome all my amazing guests. I'm going to start with, um, with uh, let's start with Allison. Alison Walter, she is an amazing actor slasher producer as well. Alison, how are you doing? And she's here in Los Angeles. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Thank you, Alison. Now we're two, and you're going to help me welcome our next person. He is a Polish slash German, and I was just saying also slash Mexican actor slash producer, Marius Bigai. Marius. Hey, how are you? Nice hey, to be Marius. here. Are you hey, in Los Angeles too, right? I'm in Los Angeles right now, yes. In the end, I, I thought you were going to be in Germany, but I'm glad you're here. And now let's, I, I'm going to leave uh, our, last, our last guest as the cherry of the cake. Now that we are three, help me welcome Katie Barberi, connecting from Chicago. <laughs> Woo Hello, Hello. Now, everybody. Hi, Katie. Hi. <laughs> These guys just met, but now they connected already, which is amazing, which is the idea of Actor Slash. First than anything, I want to thank you guys for helping me, the three of you, by reposting, sharing me, promoting this. Actor Slash is a co-op. It's a collaboration, and it's been very pleasant to have you guys in this project because thanks to them, whoever is connecting today is watching us because every time I said, okay, guys, we need to post this, they will do it. Every time I'm like a social media police. I know that I'm aware <laughs> of it, but the three of them were just fantastic. So I really, really appreciate it um, for well, sharing. You're very welcome. Them. So how are you guys doing? I'm, I'm doing fantastic. And I, I wanted to take a second to say, you know, a lot of people, especially since the pandemic started, have uh, started these types of uh, Facebook lives and, and podcasts and opportunities to connect and what have you. And, um, and in this case, uh, Banke, I have to tell you, you are uh, on a level of, of professionalism. You call it, uh, you call it Instagram police. <laughs> or you call it uh, social media police. Um, I, I, I call it being extraordinarily professional. So oh, thank you for amazing. guiding us through this process. We really, really appreciate it. Because, you know, even though we've been doing this for over a year and, and everything that's involved in, you know, the this online uh, situation that we're all in that has its its good points and it's bad, uh, there are different levels of, of ways to handle it. And you rock. So thank you. I'm oh, thank you so much. Well, just so you know, I didn't start this online. This normally happens in person at uh, different venues, film festivals and cultural centers. For instance, my Mexican consulate here in Los Angeles, they have been a big support. It. They have an amazing movie theater and they let me do my events there in person. Hopefully we'll go back in Bravo. September. But also the pandemic had brought a lot of, uh, had helped me connect beyond Los Angeles, even though I always bring and invite international people who live in Los Angeles. Uh, the pandemic has helped us do 
through Zoom or whatever, Instagram, social media, to connect from people. I have guests from Australia, from Europe, from different parts of Latin America, for, from Canada. So it's been amazing. Thank you so much, guys. So I have a question for you. Let's start with, um, before we go to the very mero mole, as we say in Mexico, the, the point. <laughs> mero mole. <laughs> mero mole. Yeah, Absolutely. We, we saw a little bit of you guys in your most, um, well, very famous roles and very cool recent and not so recent roles that you have been playing in the past. What, what do you guys think has been your most memorable role that you have ever played? Let's start with you, Alison. My most memorable role? <laughs> Um, you know, it's interesting because I'm still sort of in the up and coming stages. So a lot of the things that I've done have the general public maybe wouldn't know of. Um, but uh, for me, I just finished this movie um, called Blur's Day. Um, some of you guys know the director, Sergio. And for me, it was one of the most memorable experiences because we shot it during the pandemic with a very small crew. Um, and it was a very um, interesting, collaborative, creative process. Uh, because we had, you know, we were sometimes running the camera and like holding things, uh, you know, as we were acting, because we were filming it ourselves. Um, so as an actor slasher, it was like a really interesting, bizarre experience. Um, <laughs> we just premiered at the Latino International Film Two Festival ago, yeah. and That's had a really amazing. great response. And I, I really, um, well, regardless of what else happens in my career, I will always remember that experience because we were in the depths of just wanting, like there, nothing was happening and we just wanted to create and we had that opportunity, which was really cool. And the cool thing is you were doing it with your, is it, is your boyfriend or yeah. husband? Yeah. Or is it? Boyfriend, so yeah. it was like a team, right? Like, yeah, and we got to work the together. The about couples, time. real mm -hmm. couples. Yeah, so Sergio was casting real couples because it was during the pandemic and they, you know, wanted romantic scenes and stuff and not to have it be unsafe and also, uh, he was doing this concept of real couples around the world all experiencing the same thing. Um, so it was really interesting to get to work together um, and collaborate on that, on something that we normally wouldn't get to do. You know, it's not often you get cast opposite your significant other in something, you know? Uh, so yeah, it was really cool. And I'm excited for everyone that hasn't seen it to see it because he made a really, um, I think, impactful piece. Yeah, go check out uh, Blur's Day. I had the opportunity to do like seven roles as well, yeah. but mine were voiceover. The whole movie, just as she said, it focused in three couples, which in the end is the same couple, but you have the, the couple from Los Angeles, the couple from Argentina, and the couple from Taiwan, Taipei. Taipei. And, and, and it was just fantastic. So if, if you see it coming out, it's just right now on the, on the festival circuit, but Sergio Guerrero, if you're watching, we send you much hug. Thank you, Sergio. <laughs> How about you, Marius? How about me? <laughs> so many very dear ones. Well, for starters, um, that, that sounds so cool, the, the project you were in. And I, I really wanted to be there, but I was stuck in San Diego. And um, I'm, I was wondering, is there um, some place I can see it now? Oh, because Yeah, I know that you were, were hopefully maybe doing another film fe festival in Mexico soon. And then... Um, and from after that, you know, fingers crossed, we'll be streaming. So I'll keep you guys all updated for sure. Yeah, I think it's cool. going to be awesome. right now on the on the festival circuit because they just launched it. It was actually the world premiere at the Latino Film Festival. But Mario, yeah, tell us. Night, though. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's awesome. It is, um, I, I just like uh, started um, actually with the short film to... Um, to promote it, to to put to to find the right festivals, and it's it's like a totally new experience to be involved as a producer of uh, the, the, that short film uh, where I was acting to. And um, but it, tell it's us a the name. Tell us the name. Universe. Uh, it's called TR, and uh, we we got selected in a couple of festivals right now, and and um, right now we are in Tokyo. Uh, lift off festival but it's it's actually really cool to see what other people are doing taking advantage of um, that situation right now where there's not so much live events going on still um, that was so cool we, we got selected um, like you were in New York thousand 
Yeah, we have been in New York, but the Tokyo one I like because you they they do it on Vimeo on demand. So wow. um, you subscribe for a month, uh, like the whole month of June right now for ten dollars, and you have access to all the selected short films. So there's like I think a, a little bit of over a hundred short films. So this way you can just watch them in your house, and 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 there's like terrific work out there. I, I mean, I, I was like really like uh, pleasantly surprised uh, because I kind of remember like in, in sometimes you go to festivals and it's like, it can be so tiring. <laughs> and then, you know. Yeah. Um, you want to tell us a little cool. bit about what's the, 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 the premises of? Because there's only two, I was there too collaborating, but as a yes. evil puller, I was the Jalacables. But, uh, <laughs> but there were only two characters in one of them, which is fantastic, where obviously the two leads, one is Marius, and the other one is a homeless, a real homeless filmmaker, which is fantastic. He's a real uh, wow. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's, it's actually funny because I am um, a uh, bum dog, bum dog Torres. We, we met him through Facebook because he inspired us for a script, for a role for a script for a feature film that we've been working on for three years. And at some point, um, I was pushing to just do a short film, like, you know, like they do on, on rallies where you don't have to like put tons of time and money in it. So we shot it in two and a half days. Um, we put a couple of thousand dollars down and, and, and just to find in the most important stuff. And, and we had like so many beautiful people collaborating, like Van He, who, who helped us. And um, that was really, Really, really cool. And Bum Dog, at some point, I was like, you know what? Once we found um, um, a story that we wanted to shoot on on public domain, uh, and it was like a, a role where I felt like this is like uh, this is a role Bum Dog, the real Bum Dog. He could probably do it because I've I've checked him out and I've seen him doing short films and stuff. So we met, and 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 he said he would do it, and. Um, I can I can send you guys um, the the link so you can check it out by yourself. But that was a awesome. a real experience. Like he, I, I love that guy, and I'm I'm really happy that that um, he spent 20 years on the street and voluntarily. That's that's a, by choice because he he just didn't feel like living in an apartment anymore. Yeah. So he mostly lived in in on the street in Beverly Hills. And, um, <laughs> oh yeah, he's fancy. He picked. That's the, right? a good place to choose if you're. Yeah. Coming. I mean, yeah. It's it's yeah. it's really a story, and I want to do some more with him. Um, but anyway, he he eventually he accepted an apartment during the pandemic times, and now he's home. What's the opposite of homeless? Homeful, maybe. Oh, okay, now he has. <laughs> he has a home. Oh, in home. In home. In home. In home. Yeah. And there are just, I think, I think there are just people uh, in, 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 especially on this hemisphere who don't, and, and maybe you'll identify with this a lot, Marius. Um, I've, I've often met people in this country, in, in Florida, there's a, there's a, there's a homeless population. It's, it's kind of a subculture of people. Some of them are there for, um, you know, very sad reasons, but others are there more voluntarily. Like, oh, and I kind of feel like they maybe. Like it's hard for them to be in this country with this system, with this kind of capitalist nature. With their, I mean, I don't want to get political on any level, but what I'm saying is there are people that just feel, you just feel like maybe they'd be more comfortable in places that are a little, in, in parts of the world that are a little less, um, a little less structured in certain areas. You know what I mean? Like yeah, they're yeah. not necessarily, it's not necessarily that they, that they, that they have some sort of uh, terrible uh, problem or trauma or addiction or situation that is uh, leading them to homelessness. Rather, they're just not comfortable with the structure that everybody kind of has to be in, you know, in order to be in a home. Yeah. And so uh, I, I found that very interesting as well. I, I understand what you mean. Uh, there are people in, in Miami that, that we met, that my fiance and I met that are like that, you know, yeah. that's just kind of by choice. Yeah, yeah. Nonconformist. Well, we send a big it's, hello to Art Zuniga, who's the director. But um, Marizu, we're going to say something. Awesome. 
No, I'm, 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 it's just like, um, I think, especially during the pandemic, we, um, there's so many things going on. Uh, and, and I don't want to get political either, but like, you know, there's so much pressure just to, 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 to scratch your rent together. If you live in Los Angeles, I mean, we all oh, know absolutely. like any big city is like so much money. So on a regular base, if you're doing like regular jobs, like that, that would um, permit you in the old days to have a regular, decent, but decent life, um, that's almost not possible anymore. So I there's and there's so much stuff going on. We we saw Nomad Land, and I was just talking about that theme. And and I feel like we've never been um, like we, we we all kind of feel like that we are like one step away that this could happen to us too. So um, it's um, especially it's, artists, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, um, you know, it's yeah, especially artists, but anyone. I mean, there's no well, guarantees anymore. There's no guarantees. You, you lose your job, you have an accident, you, you don't have insurance. I mean, there's like so many situations where you can just like you know, and, 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 lose and, control. And those, who, and those who disapprove of the artist's lifestyle, it's like they don't really, they don't really have an, ex, an excuse anymore. You know, the steady job and the steady, that doesn't exist anymore. So many times people are laid yeah. off, people are fired, especially during this time that we're just starting. We're in the seedling of coming back from this you know, world altering and, and life altering on a global level situation. And it's like, we're just starting right now. There's this very sort of jubilant uh, celebration in the air and that's wonderful. And we, and we deserve that and we need that, but the fallout, the loss of, of small businesses, the loss of big businesses, the loss oh, yeah. of it's extraordinary, you know, so that it isn't necessarily, you're right. It isn't uh, I misspoke. It isn't necessarily linked just to, the arts, that feeling of sort of things being gig work and yeah. steady. It really is. It's it's branching out into areas of people who had that steady job and were living that kind of very responsible life. You know, all of these years, it's uh, it's 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 complicated for them as well. So it's true. There is something in the air. The sense of of yeah. unrest. Of, it could happen to anyone. You're muted. You're muted. What? I think you're okay. muted. You're muted. <laughs> Of course, I didn't want to interrupt you. Okay, guys, oh. <laughs> thank you, Alison. So since you guys are mentioning what are your recent jobs, but also let's go back to what are your memorable, your most dear roles that you have guys played? Katie, what are you up to right now? Like these guys just shared that they are promoting these short films. And uh, what would you say is your more, your dearest role? So I am about to celebrate 40 years in the entertainment industry, 40 years as a member of SAG-AFTRA. So as a professional performer, that's, uh, that's coming up. In, uh, and so when did you start? Year. When you were a, a baby or what? I mean, I started, when I, I, I started when I was 10. So I'm 49. This is my last year in the 40s. Wow, and, you look amazing. Uh, yes, you do. Thank you so much. <laughs> it's, it's good living and lots of love. Lots of water and lots of love. Uh, so there are several, if you will, if you will indulge me, um, I can start with water. Yes, exactly. I can start with, uh, I can start with a role that I did when I was 15 in a film that at the time, and this is just about, you know, how, how we evolve as artists in the entertainment industry and how the entertainment industry evolves and how things change at the time, it was absolutely vilified. It was a film called The Garbage Pail Kids Movie. And it was, it starred Anthony Newley, who was, you know, who was, may he rest in peace, a legendary uh, musical theater actor. And Mackenzie Aston, who at the time was on uh, The Facts of Life and is Patty Duke's son, uh, may she rest in peace as well, and John Aston's son. Uh, and I was a female lead in that film. Uh, and at the time we were, it was panned by critics as being maybe the worst film of 1987. And, uh, it was really horrible for us because it was based on the, the Garbage Bell Kids movie cards. And I played the female lead. I played Tangerine. And it was really one of these very terrible experiences. Uh, when the film came out, the filming was amazing. And we had, uh, we were, we were, uh, the first movie that ever used animatronics. That's how they did the Garbage Pail Kids movie, they were played by uh, seven little people. 
that they would put these animatronic heads on. And at the time it was very sort of uh, elementary and you could see the guys, like they'd have the, the wires behind their heads. They'd put them kind of behind furniture on the set and you'd see the guys underneath working. That's what animatronics looked like at that time. And it was very yeah. elemental. So that was something very cool for us to have, um, you know, to, and to have been a part of, but then the film came out and it was just awful the way we got panned and it was so difficult. It was so tough for Mac because, you know, he's Patty Duke's son and on some level it was, you know, and John Aston's son and he comes from Hollywood royalty. And they even, one of the critics even, you know, um, yelled at the parents, yelled at, 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 at Pat, Patty. Well, her real name was Anna. That's what her book was called, Call Me Anna. Uh, and, and John for having allowed their son to be in this film. And we're like, okay, we didn't do porn. There was, we didn't do anything wrong. It was very inappropriate for children, but it was, a lot of it was very inappropriate for children. But my point, because I actually do have one, is that it found its resurgence and it is now a cult film. Uh, and it is amazing the amount of, of fans that we have on a worldwide level who did like the movie and maybe they did, uh, just because, you know, I've had a lot of fans come up to me and say, that was a movie that, that I wasn't supposed to see, you know, when I, when I was a kid. And so maybe that's why, uh, the, the, it has the fan base that it does, but that is that, that, that film is forever lodged in my memory as one of my favorites because <laughs> it speaks of how the entertainment industry evolves and how something that can be, you know, so terribly panned and viewed as so awful can change you know, with the times and with, and with the evolution of, you know, kind of humanity, the entertainment industry and, and art evolves as well. And then the other one just very quickly would be Doña Barbara from Telemundo because it was life changing uh, on a, on a, a level of, uh, you know, just uh, people being able to see my work. And it was just one of those stories that took off with my with my dear Edith Gonzalez that we miss every day. And I worked opposite Arab Bethke and we're still, very, very good friends. And that's a novella that has been seen worldwide at least times they've run, five times they've run it all over the world. And it just, it's a reason I'm a mariposa and it garnered, you know, uh, this huge fan club called the Mariposas. And it just became so much bigger than anything oh, that I had to do with any of it. Um, no, I think yeah. I was telling you that my mom, my mom's in Mexico City and Doña Barbara is based on Maria Felix. You know, they did the movie first. And I told my mom, hey, Edith Gonzalez is going to do Doña Barbara version, like the more yeah. version. And my mom and I, back in the day, I will put Skype, you know, the camera, the webcam. I'll just put it in front of the, the, the computer and we will watch it online. Was, oh, my God. You had to work yeah. hard. Yeah, it was like <laughs> for an hour. But we will watch the whole set. How many episodes was that? Anyway, it, it was it was originally written for 120, but we did go to 190. It was one of the toughest shoots of my life. It was Colombia. It was, Columbia, it was a tough right. shoot. Very, very tough shoot. But we uh, all of them. We were very rewarding. Like Tia Cecilia, the aunt Cecilia. Yeah. So, yeah. And it was it was a, a love story between an older woman and a younger man. And it just resonated with women on such a level. And this fan club, um, we went from being, you know, kind of, you know, a fan club based on this on this character and kind of the fantasies of women, you know, of wouldn't that be great if they, if they had that relationship with that younger man that they always liked, but then the fan club kind of took on a life of its own. And we dealt with breast cancer. We dealt with infertility. We dealt with domestic violence within the fan club. And it came, it became very much like not about me and this character that I played and whether or not I did a good job and very much about a support system for women. So, um, that was incredibly cool and it continues to be, you know, it, it, it has, it, it has stayed alive and uh, that is uh, uh, wonderful. And I'm very grateful for that. Marius, let's go back with you. You do have like great projects as well. And, and, and I want also Alison, which is our youngest here. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, Marius, you have very dear roles. Like for instance, the Héroes del Norte that I haven't seen yet, but I know because I was already here, but I yeah. know it's, um, it's a great dear project that you have uh, about uh, the, like a farmer, a, a Mennonite in Mexico from the community. They, they always get you as the, the, um, the foreigner, right? 
And yeah, I think you um, guys can see. So um, um, that's actually interesting what you were saying, um, Katie. It's, it's, it's so hard to, I've been doing this also, not for 40. I, I started like on a professional level a little bit later, um, but it's been um, a good 30 years that I've been working in it. And, and when I moved to Mexico in 1999, it was like a whole new beginning, learning the language and, and, and just like um, starting, trying to break in. And, and with a lot of help of uh, my partner back then who really connected me and, and a lot of other people who were helping, I was breaking in more and more and, and uh, getting roles in theater, but no, actually more in, I started with commercials because I wasn't even speaking Spanish and slowly working my, my, myself up in TV. And then I got the opportunity to be in movies and TV series. And there's like so many, I, I, I embrace in a way all the roles I've done because I, uh, it's, it's always like a, a love relationship you have with your, with your roles. But some are, outstanding in a way and and uh, i love a, particularly a role that i did for a lego commercial but that was like a short film and we we did it like in in stop motion so it was like literally wow. photo photographed and uh, wow. i just like um whenever you know how it is like it's, it's like giving away your headshot like in the old days like once in a while you get your hands on a photographer and you have like the shot in your head. I mean, you really love a photo and it feels like this is me. You yeah, love yeah. giving it away. That's so this I short think. film, the Lego short, I can share that with you guys. Oh, I, wish, I wish I had it. I saw it. You can, it you, can, you, can, you can just like go on YouTube and put Lego click and there's like two versions actually um, of it. But this character I love sharing and, and people just love this character and it's, it's so, it's so, you know, it's Lego and, and people connect with Lego and this character is like an inventor and, and, and that was a lot of fun. I love it. Yeah, that's very cool. I love it. My fiance is very into Legos. We, we will love watching that film. You have to send us that link. That would be awesome. Yeah, we are fans of commercial, but it was friends? a short film, right? If you guys are friends, uh, fans of Friends, they just came out with a Lego version of the whole set. I know, of the coffee shop. Yeah, it's been dead. <laughs> oh, my God. That sounds like hours and hours it. of and the characters. So, Alison, let's go with you. Sure. I, again, you, you, you don't have the, the same extensive um, time in this business, but I, I can see that most of your projects are also... Uh, many of them, you probably partner with some friends and with your boyfriend and produce mm -hmm. as well. You're totally an actress slasher. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's for me, I got out here um, and I have a, you know, theater training and theater background and just got here and wanted to work. And, you know, I, I found the best way to get opportunities was to make them. So, um, and luckily it's, it's one of the fun things about doing that is that a lot of the people that, you know, when I first got out here and I was making web series and finding people to do short films with and producing and writing a lot of those people have now gone on to do really cool things that are bringing them me with them you know I think when you help other people they want to help you in return but yeah I um one of my first projects when I got out here is I found a friend who he just had a similar weird sense of humor and we wrote this series called how to live without experience which was uh, we did two seasons of it and it was a series about two girls who grew up in a traveling circus um, and, but they wow. were really bad at everything. And so all they wanted was to be normal and to like, get, escape their weird circus family. So they moved to LA just to be normal, you know? And so <laughs> it was really fun. Lots of silly <laughs> sketches, really kind of goofy, weird comedy, but we did find a niche of people that like, liked that weird style. And that's actually how I ended up. Getting well, the concept of moving to LA to be normal. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I, I get it. I get it. I mean, if that if that means I have a weird sense of humor, I'm all in. Yeah, I can't yeah. Wait, I just desperately I wanted to can't like, wait to see it. Work as a hostess, like you know. Um, but sure. yeah, yeah. So we had a lot of fun with that, and I found, um, you know, as far as even getting reps to believe in me and how to like move up, you know, in the the business, just having stuff to say. Look, I'm working. I'm doing. I'm doing this, you know. And since then. Um, 
you know, it's interesting for me really in the pandemic, my, I, I worked more in the pandemic than I did in the year prior, just because people were so trying to figure out how to create. And I ended up working on, on this, uh, another thing that actually came about because I do multiple things. I was working on crew for a new TV show um, with Barry Bostwick and Kevin Sorbo and some big people. Um, I was working on the crew and they ended up last minute needing to cast a small role. And I was like, I'm an actor, you know, and able to like have audition last minute. And I think just being in those situations, like putting yourself out there and just, I think Mm -hmm. work begets work and just being on set places. Um, But yeah, I've I've really been lucky. Again, not necessarily things that everyone would have seen, but like have played really fun variety of roles. Um, I just shot a uh, film actually with my boyfriend that we produced uh, during the pandemic um, that I'm really excited about. Uh, and we had a great crew and really professional talented people involved, but um, about trauma and, you know, victims. And I, you know, between those things and Blur's Day and just such variety in this last couple of years that um, I'm really excited to have more stuff out for you guys to see uh, soon. But yeah, it's been an adventure for sure. I've been here for few years and just dive diving in making stuff <laughs> good let's remind um le- please guys remember whoever is watching us remember that you can write down your comments i have already um my dear friend antonio chavez from peru he's peruvian but he also lives in los angeles he was here my actress lasher uh guest two we- uh two months ago He's helping me reading your messages and your comments. I have a few, so keep them keep them coming. Keep them coming. So let's talk about a little bit of some tips for actors who are watching us. We have tons of them. What is the best system for you guys for memorization? How do you keep up with your lines? Because that's that's mm-hmm. something that you don't want to be the one on set who forgot your lines. What is it, or how do you guys prepare to remember your lines? Let's start with you, Marius. You know, I, um, that's actually an interesting question <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm, I just had an experience where during the pandemic, I, I got an audition like last minute and I was asked, it was a scene with three characters and they wanted me to self-tape the three ca- characters individually in English and in German. So it was basically six tapes that six. I, they wanted me to do. Six. Wow. And it was like pretty much from one day to another. And um, so I was like memorizing it the way I do it. I, I focused on English first. And then the German one, I was like, I, I, I know that I'm, I'm fluent in German. This is basically my mother tongue. And, and that's going to just come. But it was so hard because you know you, you wanted to like memorize it in, in and 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 do three different characters. So so this process at this point was going so crazy. And 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 when I was at the I went to a place um, um, a self taping place in Hollywood and and when we are finally like starting to to shoot, I just lost it. I I just didn't memorize anything anymore and and I, I was freaking out I mean it was like 15 minutes trying to memorize it and at some point like black out and I was in shock because this is like our tool you're talking about memorizing lines this is what we do I mean this is like how we start to work a character I, I always say like the lines are just the, the peak of the iceberg and and this is where it just gets started and uh, if you can't even memorize it you're really losing trust in yourself and that was a a pretty (laughs) bad experience which by the way eventually um uh, i i I found a way to to save this whole situation and i was able to send a self-tape and at the end um i got the role even though i didn't like the self-tape at all good but what was that that's that's the thing i was hoping for that yeah, <laughs> fantastic. No, it was uh, uh, um, Bjorn actually, my my dear friend Bjorn Komarev, who was an amazing photographer. Did you see his, his his headshot and his self tape that video for promoting this? It's fantastic, light Bjorn. Bjorn, I want to meet you. You're fantastic. It's wow. Bjorn, not Bjorn. But <laughs> but, but go back Bjorn. to what you are saying. What is the technique that you use? Were you recording yourself? I I I I, I, I never use recording. Uh, just to get back, I I, I usually I, I usually 
I I walk. I like I like walking. I, I print out the the. I, I need the the piece of paper in my hand. I I can't do it on the phone or something. Some people do it. I need to have the 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 pages in my hand, and um, I'm usually walking. I I like going out and 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 playing with it. Like just like getting in in my system. If I'm just sitting, it it doesn't work. Then because you are never with did the paper on your hand. And that started this technique. I I really learned. I, I was. I, my, I did a master class for three years in New York back in the 90s with Gene Frankel. So it was pretty much similar like the active studio. So you meet once a week and, and then you would like prepare something. And a lot of times I, I didn't have time to do anything. So I would just like get there like an hour early and, and ask Mary who was like handing out, like she had like all the possible monologues. And so I would just like grab something and, 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 get it in my system in an hour and usually walking like uh, uh, around the city and, and just get back on time and, and present something. That's usually working out for me. If it's more complicated, I, I like just writing it with my, 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 my with capital letters and make it like, um, like my own structure. So it's like sometimes if I need like words to focus on, I write them in, in like bigger and um, in a way, I'm, I have a very visual memory. So if I see that page that I created, I feel more comfortable because I'm, I, a, a lot of times I need like bullets, like, you know, how does the sentence start? How does the line start? And what's the word I, I really want to be in? How do I, I, I so it, it's like, um, I wish I had a, one of those pages with me so I could show them to you guys. But um uh, that's that's usually the way I work. You highlight first. You have to understand the script and the story, and then that will yeah. help you. But then you you make bullets, and then you mark the important words of actions, words of actions. How about you, Katie? Before we continue with you, uh, thank you so much, Raúl Canton, for logging in. Uh, Ferran Zurita, he's saying hi to Mario's. Fabiola Stevenson, she was my uh, voiceover guest last month. She's a great uh, actor, slasher, and voiceover talent. And she wants to say hi to Katie because apparently you guys work together in Alondra. I think she mentioned Alondra or a soap opera back in Mexico, probably. So, so Fabiola Stevenson says hi to Katie. And we have. Hola, more. Fabiola, ¿cómo estás? <laughs> Keep them coming. And I have a question, some questions, Raul, we'll go through your questions in a moment, but keep writing them. We want to see them. And thank you so much for, for my friend Antonio, who's going to be sharing this information. So Katie, what is the system or how do you help yourself to retain so many lines uh, when you don't have to, because for instance, most of the soap opera world in Mexico Many of the times you have to use an uh, audio prompter, but it's also very hard to have someone telling you what to say because it's distracting. But when you are not using it, or like, what's your process? Tell us a little bit. Well, let me tell you. Um, in, in, in the beginning, I should state that I have what is uh, known as, and it, it, it has nothing to do with me. I did not... Uh, it's something that I either inherited or I was just born with, and it is not any kind of nothing that I should be congratulated on, but it is called uh, a photographic memory. So as I am working uh, a scene, I can literally see the lines in front of me as if it were a teleprompter. But that will only help you to a certain extent when you are shooting somewhere between 20 and 35 scenes a day, which is when it is your set or your location on a telenovela shoot, that's actually a very typical day. So uh, you mentioned the apuntador, that is a prompter that they use on some telenovelas. Uh, they use them more in Televisa. I don't know if still, I haven't worked in Televisa in some time, love to do another project with them, but I have not in a while. Um, they, and, and what this thing is, wh when, I, when I got to Mexico, because I moved to Mexico Marius in 94, and I'm surprised mm. that we never crossed paths. I'm sorry about that. That would. How long did you live in Mexico? I lived in Mexico for ten years. 
Uh, oh, so the nine years. I shot I shot 12 telenovelas there at that time during that time and I lived there for nine years. And so I'm surprised that we didn't work together. I would have loved that. Just yes. wanted to say that. Uh, but uh, when I got to Mexico, I had already been acting professionally for 11 years in Los Angeles where they do not use the prompter. And uh, they call it, they call it just, a, that's kind of the nickname for it, a chicharro, which means in English, a pea, like as in the, the vegetable, the little pea. And I remember having a conversation with a very well-known actress uh, in Mexico who was my first friend there and who I love dearly to this day. Uh, her name is Ana Patricia Rojo, and she is Gustavo Rojo's daughter. May he rest in peace. And uh, she was talking just very candidly about something she was shooting one day. And she said, my chicharro got stuck. And I, and I thought, well, and I didn't want to say anything to her for quite some time. You know, she had to tell this story and thought, what on earth was a vegetable doing in her ear? <laughs> Until I realized she was talking about this prompter. Yeah. And at the time, I was just working with uh, Sergio Jimenez, also may he rest in peace, and Adriana Barraza, who was my diction mm. coach uh, in Mexico, who was with later nominated. With Adriana. She's been a, a Adriana. Just, just an Academy Award nominee for Babel, just, you know, casually, just working on everything in Los Angeles, just, mm. just Adriana Barraza. Anyway. At the time, she was my diction coach in Mexico because uh, when I got to Mexico, I actually uh, went there to shoot a telenovela in English. There was a time in Televisa, a brief time over a two-year period, that Televisa was producing telenovelas in English with the intention of selling them actually to Fox Network, which at the time was a fairly new network. It was about 20-year-old network or 15-year-old network. Well... Eventually, uh, I think that the telenovela genre was ahead of its time uh, because soap operas in the United States, as we all know, grew up watching. We were either an ABC, an NBC, or a CBS girl. I was an ABC girl. All my children, One Life to Live, General Hospital, religiously every day. Um, but that was daytime television, and that would run five days a week. Well, the telenovela uh, runs five days a week, but prime time. And it's just something that the American audiences are not used to as far as programming goes. Now everything has changed with streaming and appointment television. It's just completely different. But at the time that they were trying to shoot these uh, telenovelas and see if they could sell them, they wanted to air them uh, five days a week like they would a telenovela in the Latin market. And I think it was just ahead of its time. But I did shoot Acapulco Bay. I was the antagonist. Uh, on that uh, telenovela, which they were they were doing a Spanish speaking version, which was Acapulco Cuerpo y Alma, starring Saul Sasso, my dear Saul Sasso, and Pati Manterola, and we would switch off locations and sets over the two weeks. So even though I was born in Mexico, I'm a very proud Mexican. I was very excited to be able to see my family in Mexico again because I had spent a lot of time in the United States with my mother, who's American. Um, and I was going to be able to live with my dad. So that was wonderful shooting this project, Acapulco Bay. I went there as basically an American actress shooting this project uh, in English simultaneously with the, with the Spanish speaking project that I was not on. But when I got to Televisa, uh, there's one casting director still for like 15 producers. His name is Eugenio Cobo. He's legendary. And oh. he found out that I was born in Mexico and that uh, I actually had two Disney movies. Uh, one was called um, Spooner, and it starred Robert Urich. May he rest in peace. Uh, uh, it was a Disney film. And uh, Not Quite Human 2, which was also a Disney film, which starred Alan Thicke. Also, may he rest in peace. This is crazy how many people we've lost. But they were these were two Disney films that were in the video store in Televisa. And so uh, Eugenio Cobo asked me if he would like to, if, if I would like a contract to do telenovelas. And I said, yo no hablar muy bien el español, because I was born in Mexico, but I was raised in the United States. And he said, that's no problem. We have a diction coach for you. And her name was Adriana Barraza. And that woman had me speaking like a native in six months. Oh, that's amazing. So during that time. But in these yeah. projects, were they using... The well, here's the thing. In the, in the American in the American project, really no, because they brought a lot of actors down from the United States, including uh, Marie Cheatham, who was on The Young and the Restless for many years and who was later on Sam and Cat. Uh, these were all American actors shooting this project. But when I started doing diction classes, they were like, you have to learn how to use the apuntador. And I'm like, 
And then I, I understood that this was a vegetable that Ana Patricia had, had in her ear. And so I started learning supposedly how to use this prompter. And I threw that thing out within two days of working on my first project, Alondra. And I promised the production, any production that I worked on, that I would learn all of my lines because I felt that action, acting is action reaction and that there was no way that I could react to what my fellow actors or or actor in a scene were doing. If I'm hearing what's good, not only that, but you know, there were some actors there that forgive me. I mean, they were a bit lazy. They would not learn their lines because they knew there was a prompter. Yeah. And I, I just had way too much respect for this profession. And I was a very intense little 21 year old and loved, you know, to act. And so I pledged that I would learn my lines and I did. And uh, um, I believe that uh, memory is a muscle. Right. Lines, if I can give any tips to young actors, uh, lines are not lines, they're ideas. So if you know that your character is going to the store in the scene that you're shooting and that they're going to communicate this to a fellow character, because in the next sequence, when they go to the store, something happens in the store, for instance. In other words, if you know what's going on with your character, you should know basically what the next line is. Some directors and writers are sticklers for every word being specific, and that's where Marius's uh, uh, thoughts fall in very specifically. Highlight your lines, uh, learn your, your, your first part of the phrase and your last part of the phrase of every line. That will help you to kind of put everything together. But especially in the American market in, in Los Angeles and in New York, and in, you know, it's kind of, a lot of times it's a very kind of loosey goosey collaborative effort. And you can say, I feel more comfortable saying the line this way as a character. And most of the time you'll get support. So as long as you know what your character's intent is in the scene, what your character's motivation is, and what's going on with your character generally in the scene, uh, the lines should come to you. And if you don't know, there is such a thing as blanking, just like you said, uh, Marius, that happens, we're human. But if you don't know, look at you know, where you're at as far as your, as your commitment to, to establishing you know, your subtext with your character and, 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 and the story and the storyline and where it's going. And you'll find that if you, that if you are truly committed to knowing where that character is going and, and, and interpreting that and justifying the character's actions as villainous as they may be, um, that, that the line should be there. Um, and, and that's, important. that's, I guess, the most important tip that I can give. How about you, Officer? What is the way you, how, how do you work on your lines in many of the projects that you have done? Maybe you wrote them so it could be easier or you participated. Right. <laughs> But how about Allison for the ones that um, that you get invited to? How do you memorize? How do you work on your muscle memory? I do audition a lot. I'm not totally out of the loop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Yeah. I know. I'm yeah, just no. in, like in comparison with these two monsters who've been in the industry for 40 years. Oh, of course. You are yeah. not even. I don't think you're even 40. So. There. No, no, I'm, I'm 31. <laughs> um, but yeah, she, I. She's uh, such a baby. <laughs> You're the baby of the group. Got a lot of Um, but so I mean, for you me, could be our daughter. <laughs> I know. Like it's um, yeah, learning. Like you mentioned, your uh, photographic memory, and you sound like you have like more of a kinetic memory. You have to move. Like it's like figuring out what kind of learner you are, you know. And um, for me, That's even true. back in school, like when I was young, I always had to say stuff out loud. So I I, I would study best by like discussing a subject or quizzing someone else on it, you know, with the flashcards versus being the one uh, coming up with it. And so when I started acting, I realized um, I actually don't highlight only my lines. I study both characters lines and learn the whole thing because then uh, my brain kind of registers the whole scene. And like you said, like getting behind the character and the story and the intention, because I feel like once I get that, it comes, but I am mm -hmm. an auditory learner. Um, so one saying it out loud, like if I, I could just stare at it forever and it won't stick, but if I say it out loud, like twice it's there. Um, and then you met, someone mentioned recording. I only recently kind of figured this out for myself because I was learning an entire feature in you know, four days or something. And I was cramming, 
Um, and I was like, didn't have enough time to just sit and read it out loud enough. And so I recorded myself, which the key is recording it monotone, flat, no inflection. Cause I don't want to get stuck in the pattern of saying something a certain way. Yeah. Um, but record just I wanted to stay organic. Like if the line is hi, how are you? It's like, hi, how are you? Like just flat, but I record that. And then I'll just play it in my ear, my ear pods. Like as I'm sure as I get like getting ready in the morning or cooking breakfast and I don't even really pay attention. I just let it play. Um, mm-hmm. and if I do that, I can learn a lot of material in a short amount of time. Um, but yeah, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's and, and I, I like that. What you, um, what you're just saying, would you record all the characters or just your life? Yeah, the whole scene and stage direction and everything. Um, okay. yeah. And I think that wow. that's down to like, what is the same? Know, how you learn? Learn? Are you a visual learner? Are you an auditory learner? Mm-hmm. Are you, you know, there's different things for different people. So I kind of feel like with, memorization it's not really about what works for other people it's just going like like try everything and you might go ah, eh, that doesn't work for me you know but if you i think giving everything a try helps a lot that's very very you know I it's do it's, like um, it. it's um it's it's very true what you say it, you have to find your own method and and <laughs> it's and and you have to be comfortable the way you learn it i that's really ins- uh, inspiring i'm gonna try that yeah. um i like that just listening to it and, and then it's going to it be like, like more. Story, you know? yeah. Yeah. Okay, actually just... like, oh, no, 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 <laughs> ahead, should, oh, I, oh, I feel like that this would be kind of like a service for that because uh, I, I don't know, is there, it's like, is, isn't that like, could we ask, could, can't we ask Siri to do that? Or is there like an app maybe for that? Because there is apps. It could be that company. Oh, yeah? there are? Okay. There, there are apps, tons of apps that you can download and put your lines. Yeah, and I have would... a voice recorder on my phone and then I'll save each what's scene as its own thing. So I can either listen all the way through or just yeah. um, listen to or just a portion. I do that. Well, and, I, and I just, to, just to put a little button on that, as, as an old timer, uh, I, we do have some good news uh, for the <laughs> youngins. And that is that uh, in, in, a, in a very, you know, uh, triumph coming from tragedy, uh, because everything has gone self tape now, and because at least in first round auditions, probably we're not coming back from that. Uh, several things have come from that. Uh, number one, you know, I, I can't even tell you as a teenager how many roles I lost because of, of nerves, you know, of walking in the room and just, you know, feeling as though the audience that I had before me uh, were decidedly. Uh, scrupulous and and uh, judgmental of what it is that they were watching and it's because they were the casting director so they were that's their job uh but uh but there were many times that I lost a role out of nerves and uh we now self-tape everything so even if we're going to you know a facility like the one you were talking about Marius but especially if we're at home with in my case you know my significant other Craig Hurley who's also an actor and who's always a wonderful reader for me and he's my lighting man and he's my producer and my director and all of those things. It's wonderful because we now can take the nerve aspect out of, you know, the, the, um, the, 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 the blanking of the lines and the forgetting of the line. We can take the nerve aspect out of that. If we forget something, it's okay. We can just go back. There was a time when every single audition was in a room And every time you auditioned, you auditioned in front of people. And there were times when the people were very kind and there were times when they weren't as kind. Mm -hmm. And so you were dealing with that energy on top of trying to remember your lines. And so the nerves were a part of remembering your lines or not. And I know that going to a professional facility and maybe you're paying by the hour or you don't want to take up that person's time. So there's still that little aspect of that. But I invite all actors at this point to fully take advantage of this wonderful thing that we now have, which right. is number right. one, that our best work is what goes out. Right. Because even right. if we're gonna need five or you know, six takes of a scene, that's a scene that's going out to casting directors. And that's actually fair. Yeah. Because yeah. you know, when you're on a set, you're a little bit nervous, but it's a different kind of nerve. It's kind yeah. of an excitement yeah. of working. It's yeah. very different yeah. from you know, the nerves of auditioning. <laughs> You're still going to be in the room eventually for a big, big callback for network. I know they're working on that. But at least for first round, we have an opportunity to get our work out there, our best work. And, you know, we, we can take that nerve aspect out of remembering the lines and all of that. So that's something that's unique to this time. It didn't, it didn't always be that. It wasn't always that way. It, it didn't used to be that way. 
So yeah. we can be very uh, filled with gratitude for that. As, as I, I totally today. share that, what you're saying, Katie. It's because I hear like a lot of actors, they say, I hate self-tapes. They just no, like, they, especially I, actors I who them. are like- I like taping. Get to choose, right. I love them too. You have, you have more I, I love them too. But well, like, especially you know, you actors have to learn who are like- You can make business. mistakes, everything, right. For a while. Right. Guys, they, I'm sorry. They, they don't we like have... doing- Maris, I'm so sorry. We have to keep this shorter. Uh, we only have like seven minutes left. Oh. But I what? Dr- I know I told you it's super fast. And I still want to share. Uh, I, w- I still want to talk about what the, the main reason we're here today. But before we go to that, I want to ask, I, I want to address this for you. Let's just be as brief as possible. Raul Canton, he's been asking, and it's a very interesting question. He says, as an actor, my question is, how do you feel about too much sex and nudity in the filming and TV industry? Do you think it's necessary? And Katie, you are beautiful as always. Vanke, thank you for doing these uh, amazing events. Congratulations to everybody. And I love seeing Marius and Alison. So... Uh, Alison, so what do you much. think about this? Let's start with you. Let's try to be as brief as possible. What do you think? Is it necessary to be? I think it's a personal this? decision for everyone. I mean, I can have my own boundaries of what I'm willing to do or not do in a movie. And each person is an individual. And on the same level, you can have your boundaries of what you choose to watch and consume and which you don't, what you don't want to put on your TV. So right. I think it's very li- li- live and let live. That's my opinion. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Love yeah, that. and also depends on the project. Maybe it requires someone who's dead on a table and they kind of need to see your body or... or Whatever maybe it works for your integrity and your opinions, you know, I think. And if you don't like watching it, then turn on something else. Right, right. That's okay. But don't there accept those things. Right. How about you, Marius? What do you think? I think I totally agree with what you say. It's a personal decision. I mean, whatever you want to do how far you want to go as an actor actress and and if it's needed or not and and the same thing what do you want to watch i think right. we you know it's if, you, if you're grown up this should be up to you what kind of movies you want to watch it's like you, you can't like yeah you can't criticize that i mean this is this is me i think it's personal freedom to 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 watch as long as you're not i'm always saying like 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 an improv in the old days Anything is possible, but you can't hurt anyone. Right. So this is like the most important part to me. It's like, but the content, it's like, it, I mean, I would go even to the extreme that, I mean, if, if there's porn going on and then there's a, there's a huge industry in Los Angeles, it's like, this is up to whoever people want to watch that and produce it. If, if nobody's getting harmed, that, that's, right. that's totally fine with me. Right. I don't think he meant like, uh, in a criticized way, I think he meant like, do you think it's necessary that Hollywood productions or productions for TV and film need to show too much sex and nudity? I think right. that's what he meant. Uh, Katie, what do you think? So I have a long uh, history with this subject because let's when make I it short. Started- <laughs> okay. This when I, when I started, sorry, when I started, I was, uh, you know, a, a teenager. And then once I turned 18, there were all of these roles thrown at, thrown at me, nudity required, partial nudity required. And all I can say is this, uh, there were some projects that I'm glad that I turned down and there were others that I turned down for the wrong reasons. I was worried that my dad would be ashamed of me or whatever it was when, you know, my dad, as it turns out, he, he was human, like everyone else. You know, if you're going to say no, to a project or a role that's worthwhile because of the nudity, as long as the nudity is completely justified and there are times when you couldn't shoot a scene without it, then make sure it's for the right reasons, not because you're trying to please anyone else. Make sure it's it's your own decision and your own choice. And then, you know, there are are roles, like if you you look at Kim Cattrall's role uh, in, in Sex and the City, you know, she spent half of that series very scantily clad, if more than that, and there's nothing about her performance that I would ever consider to be gratuitous or that she was, you know, being, uh, that, that it was in any way anything to be ashamed of. On the contrary, she was playing a role that was, she was an extraordinary comedian on that role, on that shoot. So if you, if you, if, if, if you are, if, if you love the role, if you love the project, 
and the nudity is is uh, is justified and you feel comfortable with it great go ahead and as for watching it uh you know, I think I think there's come a time where 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 we're we're wanting to see that that men maybe have to do as many nude scenes as women if we're talking about on a sexist level. That's changing, but we're going into a, a time of, you know, because of the Me Too movement, because of the fight against racism, because of all of those things, we're going in again into a wonderful time in the industry. We need to be filled with gratitude for that. You know, it's it's all going to get it's all going to level yeah. out. Artists are are uber aware and sensitive of other people's feelings in general. And I think that that's being reflected in the industry. Um, and, and so that's wonderful. And, okay. and, and it's gonna come a point where everybody is going to do what they're comfortable with yep. and what they're not, they will not. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay, so now we have to wrap this up, but before I need to know, what is that thing that you guys do to keep your, your mind and your body focused? What is that? activity that you probably do maybe you are into writing maybe you are into exercising maybe you are into breathing meditations or whatever but what is that thing that makes you guys like get rid of all stress and then just almost like bring you this energy let's start with you katie since we're here and i also have a video here to share already open. oh my god well she does have a video and there's nothing i can do about it now <laughs> uh, but uh, but all of the above, my dear, I, I thought, oh, my God, this is going to sound very unoriginal because, yes, I do write. Yes, I do meditate. Uh, I, I exercise every day. I walk um, my, my fiance and I walk my Maltese. That's one of our favorite things to do uh, to get outside to experience nature. I garden. I've learned how to cook. I can actually make three or four dishes that are edible. Mm. And yes, <laughs> yes, I Zumba. Uh, hopefully five days a week. <laughs> oh, we're gonna have to zoom it together, Katie. Do it up. Yeah, you guys yes. are gonna have to learn. Class. Can you see Katie <laughs> here? Can you see it? Can you see Katie now? Yes. Okay. It, it is just amazing. I'm gonna tell you what's my favorite thing here. I, I I just keep watching it over and over. But she's a pro. Look at this. I will. I'm gonna put the music. Look, yeah, it's <laughs> it, it, it looks yeah. very weird without music. Oh, okay. There's music. I, I'm just gonna have to rewind it. I just have to rewind it. Look at, I love your socks. <laughs> Look at that. Okay, so the socks. The socks. I am a walking advertisement. The socks are Nightmare Before Christmas. The shirt is Khaleesi. <laughs> from uh game of thrones and the hat is platform nine and three quarters from harry potter <laughs> i also dance with my look at that here i'm gonna pause it right there you see them can you see a little yeah. bit? oh my god please don't pause it there <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic i was just like she not only she has an amazing rhythm but but she's doing it in socks, and I, I, mine are green, and also well, happy face. You know, that's that's the great thing about Zumba on Zoom. You can dance in your socks. That's that's my carpet. I don't want to mess that up with shoes. And then barefoot is is not good. So I have these little booty socks that I wear, um, and those particular ones happen to be uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. And I do do that ridiculous thing. At least, you know, hopefully five days a week, maybe sometimes less. But uh, yes, Allison, I have a great class. She's uh, the, our coach is amazing, and I will let you in on that. Yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Allison, you want, I mean, since we're into the dancing, because Allison does a lot of things. I think I'm going to go with the video first, and then we'll see if I can get the picture. But Allison, oh gosh, I was just telling. Katie, that Justin, you guys haven't met El Justino Reyes. He, that's his, his name is Justin Reyes. Uh, Marius knows him. It's my husband. He's a six foot two, uh, six um, feet tall American, but his revolutionary name is Justino Reyes, and he tells there you me, go like the Rosca de Reyes, like the king. I love it. And uh, <laughs> and he's into salsa, and he's so much. 
You're going to dance. Oh, rhythm. And I, well, he offered me some encouraging words last <laughs> night when he saw the video, which I really appreciated. But anyway, I have, just so you know, I've been doing that for over a year and I have refused to post anything. I premiered that ridiculousness here with y'all. Okay. So oh, wow. that was it was an insistence. There was nothing I could do. Well, speaking oh. of Ross, I think she did a great job and she had her real trainer teacher right in front of her. But Allison is in another level. Do you guys have? Oh, no, no. Oh, my God. I think it was just like rehearsal or <laughs> having fun dancing. I started salsa dancing less than a year ago, right before the pandemic, um, just as a hobby. So I guess my answer to the saying calm is I realized that I needed an artistic hobby that was not tied to trying to be successful. Because I feel like acting is, you know, my art, but it's also nice. business. And it's nice to have like, like the dance, I'm doing it purely for fun. And there is no like, I'm going to try to be a professional dancer. Like I'm just doing it for joy. Well, the problem we have here is that one of my dreams is to be on Dancing with the Stars. Yeah. So it is still tied to my absurd yeah, ambitions. I, I just want to be famous enough as an actor to be on Dancing with the Stars. <laughs> yeah, I, my goal is not to be there. I just want to be normal and have one right food and one left food. Okay. So this but, was like two days ago, oh, this video. This is, so I, I'm actually, I'm going to go to class after this at 1.30, but um, wow. I found this video wait, with uh, wait, this woman, Liz Lira. This. If wait. anyone's looking for acting on in LA. So you can comment on it. That's fantastic. I was just gonna say, badass community of people who are just there for fun and joy and. I, I adore, I adore her. But yeah, so dance is my, like, when I need to get out of my head and just have fun. Uh, we that's self. incredible. And I love to go out social dancing because that's really, so as an actor, you know, forcing yourself to try to be present and just listen actively. Social dancing where you're, you know, especially as a follow, you know, there's a lead and a follow. As a follow, if you are not present and purely in that moment, you will mess up if you're trying to back lead or anticipate what the person's going to do like you have to just it's almost like meditating you can't think of anything other than that second you have to be present and yeah, that, and that is a wonderful way to disconnect that's fantastic and then my other thing is my plants I have almost a hundred house plants and I got into that during the pandemic because I was just like I need to do something and so I wanted more life in my apartment <laughs> so I have a lot of plants I work with my plants a lot I'm like repotting watering and doing all the things but yeah that's that those are my things those are my hobbies well, we have a we have a few plants you know uh, my living thing just go ahead keep talking i'm trying oh, to to share the picture of uh, that allison okay here it is look at oh, this. oh i forgot about this oh, yes i look at that. <laughs> it's not this is, i think the picture you're going to share was i i had to live in a hotel for a month uh for this tv show <laughs> and i didn't want to leave my plants behind so i brought all the plants to the hotel and oh. the hotel room. <laughs> so this is me in my hotel room on set with all my plants oh, <laughs> and the housekeeper oh my like, god i love that picture That's i rolled so them in on a nice. luggage cart and everyone was like the people at the hotel were like <laughs> But I could so leave them there. Behind. So did you know that with that one of the one of, I I know this for I you know but, but I, I know it because I read it. But um, one of one of the one of the conditions of AA when people are are in recovery in AA, um, they ask them to take a plant and to nourish that plant, and you're supposed to take the plant uh, mm -hmm. everywhere that you That's go. Awesome. So at the hotel, they might've had some questions like <laughs> about the amount of plants that you had and how many different types of situations you might be dealing with. <laughs> I mean, just aside being, you know, like 30 different AA months, months. it made me feel a lot more homey. Like, you know, all the other people <laughs> that were like complaining They're about the babies. Home, 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 and I'm like, you can come hang out. Everyone wanted to hang out in my room because I had the plants. <laughs> Wow. That's fantastic. I love it. Marius, we have to finish this, but I I just Marius is the most professional video you sent me. It's amazing. What oh, no. is it what you do? Not only the video that I'm gonna share, but I'm sure you also have a lot of other activities or or 
Thank no, you. I, I, I like doing a lot. I, I like to be active. And um, one thing we've been doing, like on a regular basis, hiking with my with my son, and and we even like discovered that night hiking. Uh, is, is something really challenging at the beginning, but then once you get used to it and you start to trust your eyes without any flashlights, um, it's um, it's a totally different way to to experience nature. Maybe. But one thing that I found long time ago, and this is what probably Vanke wants to show right now, is I like biking and bicycle. That that's been always my wow. thing. And uh, when I lived in New York, I discovered fixed gear biking and uh, and to ride a fixie is a totally different story it's it's basically like you don't have brakes um, the, the pedals are like um, always in movement and this is like where you have to be absolutely in the moment and to me this is like so therapeutic to just like of Los Angeles, right? go out and 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 bike and and it's pretty much like you you, you have like a you want to get to a point and you want to get there without stopping. It's like, there is no stopping. So I've, I've started that in New York uh, back in the nineties. Uh, a lot of bike messengers uh, are using fixed gear bikes. And at the beginning, it was like crazy to me to not have any control about like no brakes, nothing. And then I started to discover what it was. And it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like surfing. It's, um, um, it, it gives me like an incredible high and I, I've done that in Mexico City I've done that in many cities and um, this was actually a bike that I designed by myself and and um, yeah. like before the pandemic we were planning to do this was um, it looks professional because we, we produced a pilot it was like all about me going with the with my my bike through LA and I and was gonna like, say that so was your home video right? No, no, that was that was like uh, with my production company with Arturo together. We, we shot that to um, to um, to try to find sponsors to make it um, a, a show. So right. unfortunately, it got laid off, but uh, um, I, I might just gonna get back to it and and um, yeah. So my fiance Craig asks how concerned you are about doors opening, car doors opening in front of you through that whole process. Yeah. How much Very. you have like, kind of trained to deal Barry, with that? You, 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 you just like have this. to, I mean, you, it's it's really like 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 surfing in dangerous waters. You, you got to be like in the moment all the time. Aware, right. Aware, awareness. Yeah, yeah, like that's the only way you can do it. I just got my well, my beach um, uh, uh, cruiser and I'm just like, I'm going to go on the, on the curve because I'm, it's such a big um, chicken, but Los Angeles fortunately has those um, sections, trails. Yeah, and, they have those entire. Cars, fantastic. Yeah. Guys, we have to go, Aww. but we can stay mm. a little bit to chat if you guys want, but I just want to thank you really so much. This has been so much fun. Thank you for all the people who connected and join us in this conversation and after slash via Facebook. I'm going to be sharing these on YouTube and Instagram. Um, before we go very quick, where can you be found? Do you have a website or a place where people can follow you? Let's start with you, Alison. You want to give us your most active social media or website or whatever you want to yeah. share? Or maybe I I'm did. most uh, active on Instagram. So uh, alison.a.walter is my tag. Um, and when I'm doing other projects, I usually link things from there. So um, Obviously, IMDb and all the other places, but that's a pretty easy way to figure out what I'm up to. Excellent. How about you, Marius? Well, the easiest way is Instagram, I guess. The, um, Marius Bigai, Marius Bigai official. This is like uh, the easiest way to connect with me. And uh, official yeah, official with and one. It, it's in Spanish, so it's official. So it's only. Uh, it's actually one. official. Yeah, true. Only one F. That's the difference. Yeah. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. That's on Instagram. That. That's the one that you are. <laughs> That's why we are the most active, right? That's what yeah, that's, I mean, you can find me on Facebook, but like uh, Instagram, I'm, I'm, uh, right now I, I like problem. using it also to connect with me too. So I'm checking messages and everything every day. How about you, Katie? So I loved that visual. That was fantastic because some people are visual and some people are auditory. So <laughs> I am at, oh my God, you're not going to be able to see it. Uh, Never little... mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just wait, wait, wait. It's going to. 
It's going to just... Uh, it, never mind. Okay. Didn't work. <laughs> I am at, I am, uh, at the real Katie Barberi on uh, Instagram. I am at Katie Barberi on Twitter. Um, and I have a Facebook fan page and I believe it's called Katie Barberi Actress Activities. And so I try to, I, I try to post something every single day. Um, I'm also very grateful as an old timer, you know, the connecting with fans used to be, uh, uh, mail, snail mail. Can you send me an autographed picture and snail mail? You'd have to send it back and a series of things. And now it's just this very kind of personal in- engagement with people. And that's fantastic. So I'm very active on social media. Very really well. Well, you can find me as Van He Tapia. My name, Van He Tapia, in all my handles on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, uh, YouTube, TikTok, Van He Tapia, all together. And for actor slash, all the handles are the same actor slash with two letter S in the middle because mm-hmm. actor is plural. If we don't do this as a team, we will go nowhere. We have to do right. it together. Thank you so much, everybody who joined. I'm going to disconnect this now. But again, I appreciate it. The three of you, you're fantastic. Do you want to stay a little longer so we can say hi? Thank you, Vanke. But everybody, uh, we're saying goodbye on Bye. Facebook. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you. Muchas gracias. Thank you, Vanke. Gracias.